Oh, gosh. Uh, all right, guys, I'm back, and I just want to make this, I'm going to make this a quick Saturday morning video, then I'm going to get out there and grab those collars and get out there and do something. I think that's what people need to think of. If we're going to really look at the big picture, if you're going to look at your life and your career and what you want to accomplish, it is lead, follow, and get out of the way. So I was bad about my comments again, and I launched a, what can only be described as vicious attack on the dog savant. I mean, who calls themselves that? I would expect to see a blind, deaf puppy fetching if somebody's a freaking dog savant. The guy can't even do a train retrieve. And if you said, well, what, is, what did this guy do? What is your problem with him? Uh, my problem is that now, once I hear somebody saying, don't use the pager, so this idiot apparently says, oh, it's good for a neck massage. Uh, hello? That's the constant. Remember, the constant's like a TENS machine that massages your muscles. So that's a really bad analogy. So for this, I tear into this guy like some kind of vicious killer. The, the, the low-level stimulus is the electronic caller's past. That's its past. Its future was set in motion 20 years ago. You can't let the fact that these people don't understand that. If you said they all been in the game, they were back in the game back in the day. Oh, yeah, they were back there. They used to use Tritronics. No, they didn't. They didn't know anything until they started going on the Internet, and they said, oh, that's pretty. Greg's around the remote. I thought it was kind of cool looking at first, too, when I saw it, because you can look at different colors and stuff. I told Dogtra, you better get on top of this. Uh, but then I realized it, it didn't fit in your hand and all these things. It's lead, follow, or get out of the way. The low-level stimulus is its past. For somebody to say, so somebody to be that bad of a trainer to say, okay, so you mean it vibrates like your phone pager? Mm -mm, no, I don't see anything. And there's nothing to prove that it would work. And me personally, I don't see any. No, not a prong collar. You give me a prong collar. Now that I can see an application for. But, you know, something, a remote communicator on, no, mm -mm, get rid of it. You're just, you're hurting people's careers. I, I understand that now. Now that I understand these people are charging thousands of dollars for this stuff, it's awful. It's awful, and there's no animation at all. It's actually in the deficit. Sean O'Shea's dogs, the, the animation's in the deficit. They're actually flat on the ground. So you've got to say to yourself, you know, am I going to look back on my life and say these look, you know, if you say, well, these are my friends on the chat board. Friends how? Friends how? You know, that's what I don't understand with these people. They're so a, a, addicted to this little group of friends on this chat board and patting each other on the back. Friends how? How are these people helping you? What can you say to yourself that, I got to say that, when I heard that, that was pretty profound. And after I saw the level of animation, I realized what they were talking about. Stop it. They're all just jerking around with pinch collars. They're all in such a remedial layer of dog training. They're trying to stop jumping. They're trying to stop correct barking. They're trying to correct pulling. They're going to get a pinch collar. They're going to correct it for pulling. They're going to get it. That they're, they're at this level. And you need to understand, and I'm certainly not saying I'm operating at the top level, but what I'm saying is I'm by any measure an e-collar expert. Um, but if that's the level that you're operating at, you need to understand there's people operating. You know, there's people deep six down into this stuff. If you said these people can talk bloodstock, they can talk genetics, they can talk OFA, they can talk anything other than stim it with a prong on two. They can't. They can't even do a train to retrieve, none of them. If you said they're on their right left, they're not, and that's hurting your career. If you said, well, all I plan to do with my career is just, you know, hit dogs with constant, you know, you, you know. Because if you said to me, you're being way too harsh, I'll tell you what's harsh, constant. 
This reality of it, you guys, it's not like they're trying to use the pager and I'm saying the old way has always been to use the constant. These young guns and their pager need to be put aside. Don't listen to them. I'm an expert. I've used the constant for 20-something years. Listen to... Now, then I would expect you to, you know... But it's not. I did use the constant before, and I can distinctly remember times when you hit it too high. And when you do that, you're going to have a conscious, you're going to be stunned for a minute is what's going to happen. You're going to be stunned. You're not going to know what to do. And because these dogs, everything is happening in nanotime, they're going to see you stunned. Or they're going to see you looking at them, or they're going to see you saying, oh, sorry, sorry. And you've ruined the relationship with the dog. I, you know, if you said, if you said, you know, what you're saying to these people that they're awful trainers and all that, but you know, if every serious pro says you're an awful trainer, you're an awful trainer. You're an awful trainer. If there is such a thing as that, you guys. Some guy to claim he's been tw training 26 years, scratching it on the back for the recall. <laughs> these people can't even do a recall, but yet you are supposed to believe. You know, they're operating it here. And if you said, who's operating in this deep six level? Um, people like Mark who do it for a serious living and have some sort of addiction to winning. That's who's doing it. People that have high drive human beings. Okay, there we go. That, that sums it up right there. With a compulsion to win. That's who's developing these new better methodologies and you better my advice to anybody is look around go intern for a gun dog guy go have friends in schutzen go to schutzen trials you know have intellectual contemporaries that compete in sports because i'll tell you they're a different breed of people and mark will tell you that he doesn't understand why he has to be competing and winning but if you said, what does that give you? A very, very high motivation to figure out exactly what's going on around you with these dogs. And that's how I met Mark, because we could talk bloodstock all day long. All day long. You know, I used, and I don't keep up with it anymore. I, I don't even take the trial on these. And Mark, I don't know if you, um, well, you probably have them too, but I, I've got about 20 years worth of the trial news in there. I was going to make them into purses. You know, but if you're not doing that, if you said, I don't have any friends that train gun dogs, I don't have any friends that train upland game dogs, I don't have any friends that train shuts in, I don't have any friends that train ring sport, and I don't mean Facebook friends. I mean people that you can have an intellectual conversation about dogs with, that you're operating on some kind of understanding that I will now use aversives. What aversives are you? <coughs> People who really talk dog training don't talk like that. They don't. I'm going to find that article. Somebody wrote an article about it. It's not just me. You know, so you've got to, you know, if your career and your group of friends is those people on these chat boards, I don't have any motivation to say that they're awful other than it's so, you, you guys saw Greg training that dog. That's what I see when I see these people, I want you to understand that I'm not a vicious person, but I understood that when Ben said that it's harsh. After I hung up, I realized, no, you know what's harsh? Constant. It doesn't get, if you said, what is the most harsh thing that you could get in dog training? Oh, turn constant up to 127. Because you can do that without any physicality. You know, if you said, well, I'm going to jerk it on a prong collar, that's going to take a lot more physicality. So if you said, what's the most harsh thing you could do? Get constant, turn it up to 127 and hit it on a dog. Or if you said, I want to ruin somebody's dog training career, how can we ruin their dogs real fast? Oh, take them, we'll take them out in the field and throw a bird, and then when they run, we'll hit them with constant. You know, and they'll never go again. <laughs> you know, yeah. if you said that's not true, yeah, it is. You take the wrong dog and hit it at the wrong time, and because everything is happening in tenths of a second. So constant is, the fastest you can hit constant and let it up is about one second. The nick is a pre-timed one one hundredth of a second. So that right there shows you the huge difference. If you're, living, if you're an animal that's living in a world where you can see things, and if you said they don't, they do. That's why it all happened so fast. It, next, everything was fine, and then all of a sudden the fight broke out so fast. You know, they're living in a world where...
You know, they're taking in cues. At the, so now you're hitting for four or five seconds with this. I mean, can you understand what that's doing to their psyche? You know, whereas if you said, I don't want to hurt them, I would say, how much can anything hurt for one one-hundredth of a second? You know, if it's a dose of, you know, harsh to help remedy some dreadful thing that these people have installed like a dog that runs away from them. I mean, you know, so that's what you have to think of. If these people are hitting constant and telling other people to do it, even if you're just bumping it, even if you're just bumping that constant, you cannot do it one one hundredth of a second. If you can, they wouldn't have invented the Nick because the original callers did not. The original callers were all only constant, real high constant. So that's my problem. Whatever this guy's name is, the dog Savant, I had seen his work before, jerking some little, oh, stubborn husky puppy. There's no such thing as a stubborn puppy. The only thing there is is someone who is such a terrible trainer, they can't figure out how to get a puppy. If you can't get figure out how to get some food and get a puppy to do what you want, you're awful. You're awful. You're absolutely awful. So there's no such thing as a stubborn puppy that needs to be jerked around on a leash and forced to do things. Your job trading puppies is shaping and creating and saying, here's my creation. If you're a serious dog trainer, if you're just some douchebag that wants to jerk and correct dogs and make videos about here's how I correct jumping, not understanding the people created the behavior. So you're not fixing the jumping is a symptom of a bigger problem. So trying to fix that doesn't work. I gave on, on that years ago. So that's my problem with these people. Electronic collar training needs young, innovative minds to understand it, this is more than just an innocuous form of communication. There's something primal about it. There is something primal about this form of communication. And if you said, what are you basing that on? Crash. Because if you said crash on some level, it's just a neonate because she never, her eyes and her ears never opened. That doesn't explain anything that she does. And if you said, well, how do you know that the pager helped you get there? I don't, I don't, but I don't know how I got here anyway. I know I used the pager from the very first day. And the second day, I used the pager on the dog. And it's now accomplished in a few months. What none of these other people on this chat board can even get their own hearing and seeing personal dogs to do. So that's why I'm out to get them. If I'm harsh, it's because Constance harsher. And I'm not going to look back on my life and say, and I hope, you know, and I don't want people to look back on my life. And 10 years from now, you're going to look back at these people and say, oh, my God, they're awful. When I see these people's videos, I see that video of Greg. Awkward. Completely unaware. They're so concerned with what they're doing. And once you start petting them, I understand that if you're going to try to commute, communicate on an intellectual level with a dog, that's not going to, that's not going to, touching is going to interrupt that. I mean, you know, maybe if I tell it to people like that, that's going to interrupt your communication because physiologically their body tells them something if it's being touched. You said, really? Yeah. You know, it does. That's just physiology. Their, their body tells their brain something if they're being touched. And it's not, and if you said, well, what does it tell a coyote? Run! You know? So it doesn't say, and you can breed dogs, I can breed these labs into squishy, squishy marshmallows covered in skin that you can push and massage and knead all day long and they'll stay there and take it. And that, but that's the selective breeding. Your average dog is closer to the scale of a coyote. If we say we've got a coyote here and we've got these teddy bear dogs here that are so selectively bred, they don't have any reaction to anything, you know, then yeah, I mean, it's possible. But, you know, if you, say, you look at a coyote and if you said, well, how are you trying to say that it's a coyote lady? There's, they're not coyotes, lady. I know they're not, but they have the same... 
uh, number of chromosomes so they can produce young with a coyote. So you can't dismiss it away completely. You know, and if you said, well, what are you basing that on a fox farm in Russia? <laughs> Look it up, a fox farm in Russia. I want to go there someday. I'm going to that fox farm. Anyway, I'm going out there on the train. So, you know, if this dog savant guy is watching to me, that's a ridiculous name. You're not a savant. Oh, he's here. I am a savant. You are a savant. He's actually a savant. I'm going to go out there and do a train to retrieve and show you how stupid you are, lady, because I can do one in one day. I see from your videos it takes you at least a week. Oh, okay. <laughs> you realize I'm making that up, right? <laughs> anyway, you guys, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to run through the... Um, Breck is desperately trying to get a hold of me to take this Roddy home. And I just haven't been able to hold him. He might show up on the show, but I'm going to go out there and do the, uh, the deaf bull terrier. I'm going to do it completely silent. I'm not going to speak one word. Uh, and I'm going to um, uh, run through these new puppies, too, with the deliver to hand. And, I, you know, I'm seeing if, I, if, if my methodology was to take constant... Because if you said they're using it to make them stay and do all these things, that's exactly what they're doing. And now I'm going to ask these dogs to move over there and pick. They're not going to do it. They're not going to go and pick something up. So what you've done is now lost a very, very important part of the relationship with the dog. You know? Because honestly, most people think of a dog as like it fetches a ball and stuff. What are all these toys people buy, you know? So if you're robbing the dog of that by putting a pinch collar on it under the premise that the owner said it's a puller, the owner trained it to be a puller. The owner trained it to be a puller. You know, that's what you have to say. So now you coming in there to correct, you know, that would be like you coming here and trying to correct one of these for healing, because I taught it to heal. That's that's why you can't correct pulling, and that's why you can't do all these things. And that's why you can't use elect constant on electronic collars and use the low-level stimulus method. The people that invented it, I know the people. I know them. They were my original mentors. They didn't intend for people to still be doing it. 20-something, they didn't. So I'm not wrong, and I will fight these people. I found that. I told Mike, I left dog for five or six years ago. This is how... This is how much of a concept of time I have. I looked back on those videos. It was only a year ago. <laughs> and I remember now, I remember what happened. I got sick of SunTrust. I paid my mortgage off. I drove up there, I paid my mortgage. On the way home, I go, I'm getting rid of dog show too. I got rid of dog show. I got rid of, I don't know, I probably, I probably got rid of a few Facebook friends. I got rid of the mortgage company. I got rid of dog show. And I, I made an announcement that I'm running rogue. And I'm, go, I'm after these people. And I guess I did go after him a little bit, but then I forgot. <laughs> so now I'm back after him. You know, I am after you. You should be saying to yourself, these are the results we would like. What can we do? How can we get this? How can we as a community move forward fast? That's what they should be saying. Not how we as a community can pat each other on the back and do awful work and let the other ones give it a thumbs up. You know, look to the spectrum of people that, you know, are doing this and you're not operating on that level, but people want animated dogs. If you said there's no such thing as animated dogs, these ring sport and these shoots and dogs, they're so animated, they're shoots and dogs. I actually think that, you know how Arabians have an extra vertebrae in their tail? I believe those things have a bent vertebrae in their neck. That's what allows them to hold their head like that so long, you know. So if you can even somewhat duplicate that, you know, you're at least understanding, you know, if you said those people don't dream bigger than you do. Yes, they do. And that's the thing about dog training. There's always somebody that's going to be more motivated, that's dreaming bigger than you, that you want to grab a little of their stardust to make yourself a career, to be somebody, not just, if you think I look at any of these people's videos, you know, and say, I see some talent here, and I see some innovation, and I see somebody that wants to make a difference. No, I don't. I see a bunch of jerks 
who want to stand around mocking the pager, which is basically me, because I'm the only pager caller trainer. I mean, there's other ones, but I'm, you know, supposedly, you know. And I realized, I thought, I actually thought I had left doctor five or six years ago. But I found that thing. I, I made it quite clear. And I'm going to tell you, this is another thing before this comes out, because they're going to find out about this next. So I better tell you guys about it first. But Doctor and I had actually split up before when they caught me cheating with Greg. <laughs> Alex went on my YouTube and saw all these videos with Greg's. That was back when Greg, that was back when I first met Greg. Greg came here. I gotta go find that old video because there's. I think there's a video then of him training the dog, and I actually think he was better back then. So anyway, he gave me all these round remotes, and he made me like two different sound boxes, I think, but they were really weird. They were. Uh, he put a cat bell. Oh, I know what it was. He made a two dog remote that was synced up to itself, and one of the boxes he hung a ca uh, cat bell on it so that when you hit the vibrator, you could hear the cat bell. But you still couldn't hear the stimulus, so it didn't matter. You couldn't hit the nick, it didn't matter anyway. So anyway, I figured out that these things were awful. I had a bunch of videos of them, and I said, Greg, it's huge. The thing is huge. Uh, you know, I got five or six of these things around my neck. I look like Mr. T. You know, this is the worst ergonomic design of a remote. You have, it's designed like a stopwatch. Your average American can't use a stopwatch. Anyway, so by the time Alex called me, I had gotten sick of Greg and gotten rid of all the remotes. And I told Alex, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 Greg and I broke up. <laughs> so I went back with them. But it's just like any marriage, you know, after that length of time, because it was 18 years. And they didn't always run the company. I want you to understand that. That guy, Mark So, originally ran the company. And Mark loved me. That was the problem. That was the problem. Mark loved me. And so I was with Dogtra until he left. And they were stuck with me. And they, they didn't, you know. And by then I was very, very emboldened. And I was very, very, not as harsh as I am now, but I understand that you can say what you want about harsh. If people say, what is this woman's beef? She thinks hitting dogs with constants wrong. Oh, what is she, one of these pure positive types? Oh, uh, no. Oh, she's some e-collar expert that thinks we're doing it wrong. I mean, I'd have to say something. You know, you as a community sh should say, you know, people that are now in their 20s, you're holding them back. The pager isn't adjustable. Yeah, it is now. Your thing to say, uh, Adam Spivey, that the pager is only has one level shows one your stupidity you're not using it as a correction you're using it as a prompt i'm using it as a what do they call that thing when they oh a starter gun a trigger point for my recalls and if you said prove it okay i've got a bottomless pit the fact that you people reminded me that for a year or months and months anyway, the title of my, right after I broke up with Dogtra, I put, because I was very angry with them, they came out with the ARC. And like that one girl said, uh, yeah, what is Dogtra gonna do? Send you another caller? Yeah, send me another ARC. It was a useless, useless caller. And it had little plastic hinges on it. I said, what do you people think is gonna happen to little plastic hinges that hold a, a and Oh my God, I, no, I, I don't have it anymore. If I could show you, the strap was this big. So instead of making the strap this big, they made it bigger. They made the strap bigger, they made the pager weaker. They tried to design it like the Martin, the current Martin at that time, but the whole thing just fell flat. So yeah, we got a complete divorce after that. And I thought it was five years ago. <laughs> it was only five years ago. But yeah, prior to that, it should be made very, very clear. They did catch me cheating and when, and when by then I was over Greg though. I realized it was hopeless. He was listening to all these people. He was making the constant stronger. He was make, he was saying crazy things like the stimulus is different. It's like the bite of the mother and all this stuff. So, uh, you know, I figured out he was hopeless and I went back 
sadly, you know, it's kind of like you go back with your ex because there's nowhere else to go. So I went back with them and with some hope. And they were kind of scared a little bit after that. Like, they didn't want me to leave, you know. They didn't want me to, So they were trying to be nice. But they don't. They're from a different culture. They cannot handle me. <laughs> I would say American women that are emboldened, but that's not true. It's just me. <laughs> it's just me. So you need to understand if the pager isn't cutting edge, then what is it? It isn't the e-caller's past. It's not its past. The low-level stimulus was invented by Jim and Phyllis Dobbs. I know them. I, Jim, sent me the original Dogtra prototypes. That's where I got my original Dogtras. Those people believed in me. And I believe in you guys. I believe in you that if you said, come and show me how to sh make my results like this, I can have you have results like that pretty goddamn quick. You could have results like that pretty goddamn quick. And if you said, what are you basing on the other people? I said, here, let me show you what to do. And they got results like that pretty goddamn quick. So, but you as a community want to sit around as a bunch of snide little IACP or whatever it's called. From what my understanding is, any mofo can get in there. How? Pay your dues. That's no club. That's not, that's, and if you said my dream and passion is to use prong collars and constant, good for you. You are awful. You're a terrible human being. And if you think that that's in any way def can be defended, it can't. It can't. Don't say you don't know anything about these collars, lady. Call Jim and Phyllis Dobbs and say, do you know someone named Kelly Blackwell? I call Jim and Phil Stobbs and ask him two questions. Three, did you invent the low-level stimulus? Do you know who Kelly Blackwell is? How long have you known her? And what do you think of her training? Because I've known them. Daughtra has been around since 97. Jim and Phyllis were with Tritronics before that. And that's when they were my mentors, when they were with Tritronics. And they were able to tell me how to use the constant. I saw back then, you could, I, saw you, I saw what they were talking about. I knew you could use a constant, but of course when they said get the pager, I did. That was 1997. So all you people that want to dismiss away this work, it doesn't bother me because, you know, if you think, you know, and honestly, I don't understand why these people don't come right to my page and come after my work and say, it's pretty clear right here, this pager, there's no validity. I see nothing. I don't see dogs coming. I don't see anything like I do on their page, you know? And say, you can't even do a trained retrieve, <laughs> you know, or you can't even train an aggressive dog, you know, so it's, you know, that you would not say, I see that's recalls. I don't want anything close to that. I like a turtle recall. You know, I mean, stop it. If you really wanted to get better, and if that's, and I don't care about people that want to use prong collars, want to use constant, want to get patted on the back by these people on this chat board because their work is awful. I'm thinking of actually doing a chat board challenge. I'll give them $500. If you said, how did you get to this point? You can be so cocky and obnoxious. I used electronic callers to buy this property, build this house, and pay it all off so I can sit here and not owe anybody anything. I don't owe dog to anything. I mean, there was some benefits to being on the pro staff because I would just send them boxes. Oh, I remember. I sent them a great big box of collars to fix. And these callers were old. They were some of the original 200s. And they said they never got there. And I could not find the priority mail slip. I was convinced that their technician said, we're not fixing this shit. And they threw it in the trash. How did, it was priority mail. And I lost, of all things, the receipt. But it never came back, and it never arrived there. And you're going to tell me it actually got lost. And it was like two, two dogs and two single dog callers. I think that they said we're not fixing this shit anymore, and they threw it in the trash. <laughs> you know, they're like, probably like, this chick needs to buy more. But, you know, I mean, if your electronic callers don't look like this, you know, to, to not concede at all, you know, to say she's never helped anybody. All she wants is your money. I want this tool to be understood for the profoundness that it is. It's not just that you're placing the constant with the pager. It's a primal form of communication that allows you to blow things up. I mean, honestly, if you, 
And to, for me to sit here and say I've got the fastest recalls, bring it on if there's somebody else. If there's somebody else, bring me their head on a stick. No, <laughs> that's the wrong saying. You know, bring them to me. And if there's somebody that says, I don't want those recalls, then unfriend me now. You know, because I do want those recalls. And it's fun and it's exciting. And it's fun and exciting for the dog. If you said what you're do what Sean O'Shea is doing, those dogs are obviously having fun. They're not having fun at all for this guy to claim to be an aggressive expert and insert his thumb into the rectum of a pit bull. How stupid are you that you believe that sticking your thumb in a pit bull's rectum stops a dog fight? I never heard of anything like that because it's not true. It isn't true. And don't say you Hi Lanny. There's apparently some myth going around that to break up a dog fight, you stick your thumb in a dog's butt. If you hear that, please say no. I know a woman that's an expert with dogs, and that isn't true at all. And it clearly by that video wasn't. The dog didn't stop. That is made up by some sicko. I'll tell you that right now. Some sicko that wants to do that. And if you said, who is that sicko? From what I saw in that video, Sean O'Shea. You don't get any sicker and weirder. You don't. You do not get any sicker and weirder than inserting your thumb into the rectum of a pit bull. You don't. That is as sick and as weird as it gets. I never heard of anything like that because it doesn't exist. You know, and I did. I, I do have a background in aggression because I used to train protection dogs and I made a living doing it. Looking back now, these people were idiots. They didn't know anything. But that was when Schutzen had just become popular. Everybody wanted a dog that could bite a sleeve and every other thing, you know. And I can understand it from a technical aspect. And I've got people that are my friends that are these people that I'm talking about. They're a different breed of people. And I guess maybe that's what I'm trying to say. You need to know people of this breed. And if you said, who are these people? A people with a compulsion to win. That's how we develop dog training methodologies, really. If you can grab a little bit of stardust from each of those disciplines, it's something called fusion training, and you are going to be able to, you know, you're going to be able to master the pet market very, very quickly and possibly have your career move on to something bigger. If you said, what would a good... What would be a good launching point for somebody that really had a desire to train service dogs or do advanced work? Start out doing electronic collar obedience and get as much under your belt as you can get. If all these people out there, I'm willing to go on the record and say I've got more under my belt than all these people put together. None of these people can convince people to leave dogs with them for any length of time. It's not that they can train them faster in two weeks. That's all they can convince these people. That's all the faith these people have in them. I've had people leave dogs here for two years. Let me tell you what, don't get used to those kind of clients because when they, t when they tell you they're taking the dog away, it's going to break your heart. So, you know, you've, it, you know, if you said, what do you want to be in your career? Somebody that can sit at my house and create content and develop methodologies and not have to leave my beautiful little utopia. That's who I want to be. I understand that there's people out there like Mark. He can't do that. He can't do that. And you need to know people. It's a different breed of people. He doesn't understand himself, and they don't understand themselves. It's like a gambling addiction, and he and I have talked about it. He can't stop it, so don't fight it. You know, people like that are very, very motivated to figure out how can I be better than all these people that are really, really excellent. That's what it is. All these people on this chat board are all mediocre. So that's why they don't, they're not motivated to be better. There's nobody better. The people that are doing it for competition they're a different breed. They are cut from a different cloth. And you've got to know these people. The heart that these people have for dogs is bigger than the heart you have for dogs. I'm sorry to have to tell you that, but it's true. And the heart that I have for dogs is bigger than any of these people on the IACP. And if you said you're saying you're a better trainer, then yeah, I am. 
I'm not a better person. I'm a horrible person. I'm very harsh. <laughs> Thank God I'm not one of these women from New Jersey. Maybe that's what I need to come back as. You know, they're real aggressive up there. If you've ever watched that show Jersey Shore, oh, those bitches would be on them way worse than me. They better be glad I'm not. They better be glad I speak with this Midwestern accent. Because if I was one of these Jersey bitches, oh, yeah, oh, my friend Stacy, she's from New York. Shoot, so I'm all it's they're idiots. These people don't suffer fools. And you people that are on this chat board putting up with these people, afraid to stand up to them. But it does sound to me, from the feedback I've been getting, people are asking, what about uh we heard a new term that we had heard of on the board? It's called animation. What's that? They're all I, you know. And if you said your dogs aren't even half as animated as these competition dogs, I know. I don't know how they get them like that. <laughs> it's unbelievable. And, it's, and if you said, how are they getting them like that? I'll tell you, they're pushing the edge of the envelope in two ways. They're pushing the edge of the envelope genetically with the dog. So these dogs, again, they're only selecting, selectively breeding dogs that win championships. And if you said, what do those dogs have? They may be cut from a little different cloth, too. So you keep cutting this cloth and weaving this cloth together. You got yourself a different cloth. You know, that's people don't understand genetics. People don't understand why, you know, and Courtney will tell you the only dogs that can be trained for these off leash bomb dogs are uh, QAA caliber field trial dogs. And if you said why, because genetically they've woven that cloth since. 1953 or 23 or whatever it was, they've genetically woven that cloth only with individuals who won championships. And if you said, well, those are same as normal dogs, not after you do that for 46 generations, they're not, they're then the different cloth that they're cut from. So you take the people that are cut from a different cloth and the dogs that are done, and these people are driving this envelope. You look at competition dogs from 20 years ago, they don't look like the dogs from today. And if you said, why? Because these people are punching a hole in the envelope. And I'm punching a hole in the companion dog e-collar market because that is the biggest untapped market. And if you said nothing you've done is pr proved that this is works across the board on every breed, we need to have head halties, we need prongs. Some girl, I'm sure she's blocked me mind now, doing a whole webinar about a proper way to use a prong. Here's an idea, girly. There isn't any way if you're in the companion dog market. If you said, well, competition people do it. Exactly. Exactly. They do it because these dogs are cut from a different cloth and they're trying to get some kind of manual steering on this thing. You're not training in drive. When you're not training in drive, a pinch collar is a disaster. And if you say that's not true, go find a serious competition pro to, to argue. Because what you pet people are doing with a prong collar is trying to stop the dog from pulling. You're trying to stop it from doing something. You're not trying to get it healing. You're trying to stop it from pulling. And don't say that's not what you're doing because that's what you're doing. You're trying to pull on it and stop it from pulling. You're trying to pressure and release it into not pulling. Instead of shaping the behavior of heel, understanding that the reason that it pulls is there's no behavior of heel. Heel does not exist in that dog. So pulling it isn't going to make it heal. All right, I know I said I was going to keep this short, but I, I, that, that emboldened me when I saw that. I honestly, I saw that. I went back and I remembered what I said. And for you guys that don't live in America, there's a saying when you're on the CIA that if you're off the reservations, that means basically you've left the organization and it's like Jason Bourne, they're going to hunt you down and kill you. <laughs> so that's what I said. I, when I left Dogtra, because no, do you actually think I'm dumb enough to go on there and say that when I was still with Dogtra? I think I was able to keep it together somehow when I was with them. I only yelled at them. I only said those things to them. I didn't realize how bad these things had gotten on these chat boards that these people were all doing this shit until I started seeing all these videos with the round remote and the comments disabled. Then I became aware. Then when I left Dogtra, and it was, it was sort of, maybe an existential crisis. When I paid off my mortgage, I didn't have to train all these toads and do all these things anymore. I could just tell people what I really thought. And I said, that's it, I'm off the reservation and I'm running rogue. 
And if you don't like what I have to say, and if it's harsh, then it's because what I think that you're doing is harsh. Nothing is going to convince me you're going to come here and put constant on any of these dogs. Any of them. You're not going to put fucking constant on any of these dogs and claim that you're going to get better results than I am. You're sick in the head for doing it. You are sick in the head. And Brent, whatever your savant ass, the terrible training, sit there and claim I've been training for 26 years. You can't even do a train to retrieve. You should be saying to yourself, whatever this woman is doing, we need, well, let's do the, at least a little bit of it because maybe she isn't lying. You know, maybe, why don't you call Dog Trebek? I'm actually going to go on there and say all these terrible things and then uh, put Dog Tre's phone number and say, please call them right away. <laughs> We've never heard these words before. <laughs> so, you know, you'd, and you'd have to say to yourself, what motivation does this woman have? I don't have any monetary motivation. You know, I'm not trying to get steal these people's... Yeah, maybe I would. I would try to steal them away and just help them for free, maybe. I would do that. I would try to steal these people. I would try to stop these young dog trainers from giving these people thousands of dollars. Where are they getting thousands of dollars to give these people to go home and train dogs to make how much money? How much money are they making for this, you know, and the embarrassment of going to somebody's house and saying, oh, this is what we're doing with your dog, a prong collar and constant... I don't. I can't imagine intelligent, educated people doing that. So you're going to be dealing with people who aren't going to be willing to pay as much money because they're not going to have as much money. And if you said, who has money to spend on dog? Intelligent, educated people that want the best for their dog. You know. Not idiots, you know. Anyway, guys, I'm going to go out there and do some actual... Oh, hi, Christopher. I love all your stuff. I want to get, um, I don't know if you saw, I have that Doberman. I want to get that, um, I saw that collar you had. It looked like the American flag. I want to get that for my Doberman so I can um, do, like, one of my films and set it to, like, some real patriotic music and stuff. I'm the, Ameri I'm the empowered American woman, and I guess what I guess what my problem is. If you said, "What is your problem with these people?" They're, if you said what they're doing is punching a hole in the industry and driving this stuff forward, and they're not, they're not, they're holding it back. If you want me on your page telling me that you're an awful dog trainer, there's a very easy formula to do that. Go on your little chat board and say, don't use the pager. Sean O'Shea needs to be saying right now, oh, I started to go back on there. You guys be glad I was able to hold it together. Luckily, Crash jumped on me right then and, I, and she was doing something, so it distracted me for a minute. Uh, but go on there. He, he should be going on there and saying, this is my chance to expose you. Let me show you how this pager doesn't work. Look at this work. <laughs> Please. Please. They're doing a 20-year-old method. They're not helping anybody. They're holding these people back. They're not punching a hole in the envelope. I'm calling... I'm going to get Phyllis, a hold of Phyllis. Phyllis is impossible to get a hold of, but I can get messages through with Gina. And, you know, if Sean O'Shea thinks Dogtra is canceling my dealership, I got news for you. I got my dealership through Dogtra. And if you guys, if anybody wants to get a dealership through Dogtra, get in touch with me because I'm going to tell you what it is. They carry every collar. So you can have a dealership with every brand. And they've actually gone to Garmin. And I started to go to Garmin, but... I'm just, maybe I'm afraid because I do have a knee jerk muscle memory reaction. I know how to use these things without looking. So I'm thinking if I get that thing, the way I don't know how to use things that good at first, it might be a disaster. Just like it is for you people at home. You know, when you get these things, if, you know, like this puppy, I'm trying to, I'm getting ready to get this puppy pre out and they bought the collar, I had to, but they never used it because they didn't know how to use it. That doesn't help anybody. When people bring the collar back to me, it's got that little lanyard on it with the little baggy tie on it when it still looks like that. I said, you're not going to learn how to use it by not using it. You're not going to learn how to use it by not exploring new avenues. Every other field innovates. I don't care what it is. Am I wrong, Christopher? 
He makes all kinds of new innovative stuff. These are the people you end up loving in your life, not the people that won't innovate, that won't be different, that won't dare. And if you said you don't have balls enough to stand up to any of these IAC, bring them the fuck on. Because I told the fucking president, you are awful. You're hitting dogs with constant. You have the personality of a tree trunk. And you are not you are not using the pager, and you're hitting him with constant, and you're on the Tritronics thing, hitting it too high, saying to the dog, "What was that? It was you hitting it too high." And 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 you're claiming to be the president of an organization. You're hitting it too high. You should have everybody in that goddamn organization doing a deliver to hand if you want to help their career. Everybody should be doing a delivered hand, so we should move past that. So now everybody has now figured out a way to train off-leash bomb dogs. Because if you said, where did that come from? People in the field trial industry, people that are cut from a different cloth, people like Mark, wove a cloth so that's basically ballistic nylon. There is no other dog in the dog world that will go 500 yards from the handler and still be under the control of that handler. They won't do it. Mark's saying 400. He's not that bright. But, you know, show me. There isn't any other dog. And the only reason there is is because those people punched a hole in the existing envelope. They didn't push the edge. They punched a hole in it because there is gazillions of dollars involved. And if you don't believe me, ask Evan Starlene Mac's owner. And if you don't know who Evan Starlene Mac is, go to OFA and type in that name, and you're going to see the largest database on OFA. Those people punched, and every single dog that's punching a hole in that envelope carries that dog. They punched a hole. You people in the pet market don't want to punch holes. You want to flounder around in the mud. You should be saying to yourself, there's clearly something valid here. This woman has the personality of a porcupine, but she is able to be charmed. If you want to know how to charm me, send me a message that says, I love your work. <laughs> I seem to fall for that immediately. It's worked every single time in the past. Every single time in the past, I'm immediately enamored with these people. And I do everything in my power to help them. You know, and I was trying that with these other people, but I finally decided I'm just going to have to go with a little bit more harsh method. I watched Samantha B. the way she goes after these politicians. She has to write on her wrist, don't be cunty. <laughs> I'm going to start doing that. <laughs> Anyway, you guys, I'm going out there to train this puppy pre. I'm going to work on a deliver to hand. I truly believe you can get any puppy out. I, I truly believe you can get any puppy doing this just by operating on that level, not touching them, you know. And I don't want you guys to think I'm completely insane because I've got to have, and that's what I've got to work on befriending Joe Zerk today. Um... I, I truly believe that Crash is reading my thoughts. And if you said, what are you basing that on? Watch the videos with no sound. She's blind and deaf. Sure, I'm gabbing away, but she doesn't hear me. I want you just to watch the video of her going and getting these things with no sound. I am narrating. She'll have a slight pause, and then she'll go. The deaf one, too. I'm going to work that deaf bulldog, too. I, I you know... I'm not sitting around saying, I'm a pet psychic. I don't know what other conclusion to come to, though. And that's why you've got to have friends at your dog training intellectual. If your dog training intellectuals are pulling prong collars and hitting dogs with constant, you're not going to get better. You're not going to get to this point that I'm at where after 20-some-odd years, I don't even have to do this anymore. All of this, all of my property, everything's paid for. I don't, you know, I busted my ass and paid this thing off. I, I paid off a 15-year mortgage in three years. Once, I think once that was all done, I was just like, fuck it. I'm going to work on developing my work. My brother's like, oh, maybe you should, you know. Oh, he should talk. He's more of a workaholic than me. But, you know, he's like, maybe you should slow down. Maybe you should think about it. I was like, no, now, you know, this work is my passion. That's the cloth I'm cut from. I don't really care about competing with anybody else, and I'm not trying to compete with these people. You know, but I understand the people that are doing that are the people that are pushing the envelope, and your focus needs to be eye on the pie, right on these people. You need to be watching what they're doing and understanding technically what they're doing and saying, how can I use that? Because if you said, if you didn't know Kurt 
Helen, Godfrey, Jim Helen, and all these people, you wouldn't be able to do what you do. I'd say, oh, you caught me. You caught me. And these people believed in me, you know. And so with the help of all these people and having them as intellectual friends, understanding, if I didn't understand how they were getting them to do something, I would ask them. And they've just explained, you know, they, it, your intellectual contemporaries in dog trainer are going to explain to you in terms that you, they're not going to say, we're using an aversive. They're going to tell you what they're doing and you're going to understand that. And that's going to help you in your career. You're going to get better. You know, you want to be different. And, you know, th there's no more original ideas. There aren't any more. Low level stimulus is not an original idea. And I don't mean just, they're talking about in the world. There's no more. The only ideas that there are now are combinations of existing ideas. You know, so that's what you have to think of. The prong collar, done to death. Low-level stimulus, done to death. The pager, not so much. And I think it's somehow, if vibrational communication is the oldest form of communication in animals, it's, um, honestly, I need intellectual contemporaries in dog training that I can understand, that can understand me enough for me to say, it's kind of scaring me. What do we have here? You know what I mean? What do we have? If you said Sean O'Shea, any of them would have got crash, and she would have been doing, I don't even understand how she's doing it. That's what's scaring me. I don't understand, how is she doing it? I don't understand, if I don't understand it, and I could sit there and be a cocky jerk and say, oh, well, I taught her. I, I, I don't remember doing that. I've been in a fog since the hurricane granted, but I don't remember teaching her how to do anything. It's the only thing that I can, understand is that she's either learned it consciously from these other dogs so if that's what they do or somehow she's reading my thoughts it's, it's scary you guys and I would want everybody to be this excited about this and if the pager helped me get to this I'm thinking to myself if the pager helped me get to this point if people pick up my work now where are they going to be in 20 years I'll be dead by then but you know, I would have said, you know, I did make a difference. I did help. I did not let Jim and Phyllis's work go to vain, you know, die in vain, you know, die a brutal death at the hands of these IACP awful stimmers, Victoria Warfel, Sean O'Shea. I'm doing a top 15 list of, of the worst of the worst of the worst. You know, they're not doing anything. Get out there, punch a hole in the goddamn envelope. You know, have passion, move forward, find friends that are better trainers than you. If you said, Who, what friends do you have that are better? All of my really good friends train better than me. That's why I love them. You know, that's why I love them. You know, and I'm in a little bit different discipline. But if you said the pet market is not in screaming need of new methodologies, based on what I'm seeing it is. Based on what I'm seeing it is. The fact that the clients I have are educated people that seem to be able to understand it too. I mean, that gives it that gives it validity to me too. You know that they don't seem to they seem to be able to understand it. So, you know that validates it. And the fact that it works validates it. And the fact that theirs doesn't work doesn't validate theirs. Anyway, I don't want to rant on like a lunatic. I'm gonna get this puppy out there and go work on that. But I want you guys to think about it, that if you're ex excited as I am to get up in the morning. And get these dogs out and have them read your thoughts. <laughs> You're going to probably regret, you know. But if that's what it is, if that's what it is, I don't understand, you know. If not, how are they doing it, you know. I don't. And I took that deaf bulldog because it's about as unlikely. Because if you said you've used the collar on that dog as punishment, oh, you caught me. I had to. He was killing all the other dogs. You know, I collar conditioned him, but then, I mean, if you said you never hit him with constant when he was attacking, the hell, I didn't. Pretty sure I hit it on the highest thing. So he's, he would be less likely, and they're not known to be retrievers, and they're not, not known to be, oh, they're known to be stubborn. You know, so that's why I did it with that one, because I'm thinking if this one can do it, now it's reading my thoughts. Now I'm really getting scared. That's probably why I, that's probably why I lash out out of fear. <laughs> I am afraid. I don't know. I need other people getting scared like this to figure out what these dogs are doing. Tanya, what are you doing? Tanya's one of my oldest friends. What are you doing, girl? Send me a message. What's been going on with Shelly? Have you heard from her? I think of that as a cautionary tale, girl. A cautionary tale. I still remember that time that me and her and Johnny were in uh, Dennis's Jaguar leaving the 
uh, Whitehall, for some reason, we jumped in Dennis's Jaguar, and she was driving down A1A, and Johnny was in that terrible blazer they had at the time, ramming us, ramming Dennis's Jaguar. It was awful. It was awful. And then she ended up with that guy, and she was so beautiful. You know, always have friends that are smarter, more beautiful. Tanya's one of the most beautiful people I know. And I don't want you to, I don't want you to be sad, Tanya, and I don't want you to defend yourself anymore on Facebook. I don't want you to defend the fact that you need to be treated a certain way, any of that, girl. You're one of the most beautiful people. You really are. So you go get them, girl. Go at the world with a fierce heart. Just get out there and get those kids of yours changing the world. That's your job. Get those kids of yours changing the world. All right, guys, I'm going. I'm not going to um, babble on anymore. I said that was short. I've been on it for like two hours. I'm going to get this puppy and go right out there and train to retrieve. I love you too, girl. And you go at that world with a fierce heart. Get out there. I want you guys to understand I have friends, and it's taught me a lot having friends on Facebook from the second and third world. And I knew about this before because I was raised, you know, my father was in the military and we I mean we did understand about people that didn't have anything you know these kids in Vietnam and stuff but when you this is how these people live now we are the American woman we are the people that are supposed to be changing the world so quit bitching and Canadian women too and you know who I'm talking about Janet we are the women that are going to change the world. So get up, get out there, get excited about your life and change the world. These other women don't have the power to do it. It fell on us and it boils down to if not us who. You are the American woman. Get out there, Tanya, and you gave up your life to have those kids change the world. That's what it boiled down to. I love you, girl. Bye.